Hey guys, good afternoon. I find myself over here in uh, Fountain Hills, Arizona, and I gotta, gotta have something of a special treat because I have a world famous beaver over here. This 2001 Beaver Contessa might be familiar to some of my viewers, but even more exceptional than this uh, beaver is the guy who's over here with me. It's the world famous Andrew Steele. Yeah. What's going on, James? <laughs> well, you brought me out to take a look at this beaver a few days ago, and I'm not saying that I gave you the green light to, to buy it, but you didn't buy it. Did do a little bit of an inspection on it and it looked like a very clean beaver to me. In fact, I was a little jealous. I think I wanted to buy it, but you beat me to it. It's fair enough. I was contacted by your good friend, Doug, and he asked me to do something strange. What are you gonna do, man? He asked me to take your beaver all the way across country to Kentucky, do a little shakedown cruise for it. Uh, kind of a little inspection as I'm driving it and give him a list of what I think might need to be done when it gets to his place. I don't imagine there was gonna to be too much because uh, like I said, when we did do that inspection, it's very evident that the maintenance has been done on it, it's been well maintained. And uh, I hope to just tell him it's a beautiful, beautiful motorhome that uh, it's a time capsule. I mean, you're not gonna find this coach anywhere. So I'm, I'm pretty jealous. Well, hey, you're the one that gets to take it out on the open road and enjoy it. So how are you feeling about this road trip coming up? I always love a road trip, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, for some reason, we had a nice rainy day today, so hopefully there's better weather in Kentucky. I definitely want to share this with everybody. It's a beautiful coach. So right. thanks a lot for your time, Andrew. And... All right, so the journey begins, but I do have to load up first. But you guys, uh, the trip isn't going in quite as planned. I'm back here over at the shop with this Contessa. Doug did actually ask if we could get the body work done before we get it to Kentucky. A good friend I've been working with for years and years named Tom, he, uh, he agreed to help us out. So basically he's doing the entire driver's side. Uh, we already did the roof radius on the passenger side here. The front cap radius right there. There was uh, some damage to the bumper, uh, a crack on the sidewall on the other side, and then the engine doors were peeling pretty bad too. So it's quite a bit of work to get done in a short amount of time, but once you guys are done, we're gonna load this thing up and head back to Kentucky. All right, Tom. Okay, so, so we're looking pretty good over here. We got all the body work done here. Gonna get the doors painted back here too. Tom and his crew do fantastic work. It's really quite amazing what they accomplish here. There are a few things I did actually do, like I got the entry step replaced, uh, did a little electrical repairs, a little once over to make sure I'm not gonna have an issue, check all the fluids before we drive to Kentucky. And uh, I think the last big thing I did was replace the, the drain hose, the flexible drain hose in the galley slide because there was just a bucket there for now. Now, I'm looking at, there's the drain, it goes down in the P-trap, goes around to this uh, ABS and the vent. Somebody's fixed this before, but there's no end to that there. Here's the update. I finished up the slide out drain hose on this Beaver Contessa. I think I got it all set up now. Now you screw in because this is PVC, flexible PVC swap hose. So I can be glued in and that can be glued in. And put to a T and then I put the auto vent a little bit higher so that uh, it's not so low. But this is going to look sharp by the time it gets to Kentucky. Sure is some clean looking work they got going on here. Be excited to drive this thing because it's going to look so good driving down the road. I'll do some color correction on some compartment doors right here. It's looking pretty bad. There it is. This was the side that was all damaged. Not really damaged, but all clear coat was peeling on. Basically, they painted the whole thing, with the exception of maybe those compartment doors back there where you can still see a little bit of dirt on it. There was a lot of old paint jobs that didn't match up very, very well, and they tried to blend that in as best as they could. And this does not look like a 21-year-old motorhome anymore. Even over here where, the, where there was a little bit of checking that you could have seen, can barely see it anymore. Wow, that's clean. That looks really good. 
man they did good work the paint on this engine door was peeling really badly so they went ahead and painted that and on this side they didn't paint this at all that's how beautiful it looked see this looks as good as the other side now or the other side looks as good as this side now but they did paint the roof radius at the top which is a pretty standard issue on an rv after three years let alone 21 years but then they also did, went ahead and painted the front roof because it was peeling doug hadn't really originally promised any of that other than the driver's side but if you're going to make that side look really good and the front looks tired and the back looks tired uh, it's kind of almost defeats the purpose of doing the job at all so he decided it was the right thing to do and i agreed with him but of course it wouldn't be my channel if we didn't take a look at the roof so let's take a look at the roof now this is the first time i've been up on the roof so whatever we find is what we're going to find together so in 2001 this is a true gel coat fiberglass roof it's not seamless because obviously there's a seam in the front and in the back but there's no seams on the side and this is fiberglass they had just painted here so you might be able to see a little bit of a dusting of overspray but that's going to happen even from the factory the front cap they went ahead and they resprayed so there's no peeling on the front cap anymore and that did wrap around to the front let me carefully look at the lights i don't see any cracks on those lenses and the sealant looks good so these are still the original air horns and the original sealants still intact after 20 some odd years and this front seam, maybe there's a little bit of cracking right there, but I'm walking it and I'm not feeling anything loose, so that's good news. If I look around over here, a little bit of cracking right there, and a little bit right here, but even the sealant on the side were looking pretty good. Uh, this TV antenna is definitely original. Maybe I could recommend changing this one out to a non crank up one since this one's probably at the end of its life, anyways. And at the same time, because to reseal this, you'd have to take this TV antenna off. But I don't see any leaks down in the ceiling. You can see the wind sensor for the dried awning is still intact. Uh, maybe I could recommend resealing this. Take a look at this AC. It's not loose. I know that because I tightened it up because it was loose. So I already did that part. Uh, this wiring is the original aftermarket installation on this wine guard first generation moving view it likely is obsolete and probably should be ripped off but other than that it's not loose sealant's still good there might be some spider cracking on the roof here that's just going to be caused mostly from lack of maintenance so it needs to be waxed and washed and waxed but that's just going to be the cosmetic side of it on the gel coat it's not leaking now I would guess this solar panel is the original one. I have a very similar one. And I mean, it's over 20 years old. It's probably down to its warranted period. <laughs> but I'm th I think it's actually still working if I, if I remember correctly. Look on this radius on this side. They did paint the entire radius over here too. And that just looks like a brand new RV. Wow. It still does have the Norcold 1200 refrigerator in there, but if I do remember correctly, the previous owner went ahead and upgraded it to the new non-flammable cooling unit, or less than flammable cooling unit. That's how I could tell that it had been maintained over time. Uh, this sealant's cracked. This is the original vent. At this point, to peel and reseal, I would probably just be recommending a new vent after 20 years. It's definitely done its job. And, uh, it's time to let it retire. Take a look at this skylight. Now this is the original skylight and believe it or not, it's not cracked. I don't know for sure if this is the original sealant, but I don't see telltale signs of old sealant being on here. So this is probably still the original sealant. So like I said, if you do it right the first time, you don't have to keep resealing. I don't see any screws picking, popping up. Yeah. No cracks on the skylight, we're looking good. Come back over here to this fantastic vent. Again, I would probably recommend just replacing out that entire vent. And I'm sure these sewer vents are at the end of their life too. Maybe put them out of their misery because they could be resealed. But the plastic itself is all chalked up. These are like $3. We're almost to the back here, not a lot on the roof. 
So this rear roof AC, still the original one. Uh, I think both of them are original based on the shrouds I see. There's a crack right there, but that's still very serviceable. And this roof is very, very solid. When I say that uh, Beaver built really good coaches, high quality coaches, that was not a lie. This is solid. We'll finish up looking at the radius here. That's brand new. Looks like there's a little bit of checking coming right here in that fiberglass. That's just gonna be cosmetic. And like I've said many times, checking is uh, permanent. You can't really over paint over it because it's just gonna come through the paint. It's not anything other than cosmetic. And that's pretty minor checking after uh, 21 years. If you look right here, this side's okay. I just have my drill up there to tighten up a few body molding screws that were st uh, sticking up anyways. Now this is a fiberglass, molded fiberglass rear cap. They repainted all this too where I just stepped. So hopefully Tom didn't see me do that. That clearance light looks okay. That one looks good. That one still looks good and the sealant looks good. Normally it's just going to be a uh, clear silicone used around the side of it. And that one still looks good. This is a uh, battery maintainer for the chassis battery. It's maybe an 8 watt panel. Uh, probably does more harm than good being up there making four holes. But at the very least it's already been ran. Wire so you could upgrade it if you wanted to. But we'll go ahead and walk the rear seam. And I'm not seeing any signs of this one being loose either. See it looks intact here and there. And intact here and there. There was a very quick inspection on a from a 2001 Beaver Contessa made in Oregon. I didn't find much wrong with it. Now, I'll grant you that all the paintwork's already been done, so it looks a lot better because of it. But yeah, properly maintained, these roofs should last quite a long time. That's why gel coat fiberglass roofs are the gold standard, pretty much. And what you'll be finding on a, uh, a luxury diesel pusher. Even after 20 years, this is still the standard. Beaver built them right. Don't worry guys, I actually did already. Make sure the AC was tight because I already tightened up this AC down below, the one I did the front one. Let's get back down on the ground and we'll figure things out. That's definitely a beautiful roof for being 22, 21, 22 years old. Very minimal issues that we found up there. A lot of it is signs that maintenance has been performed on it and a lot of it's still the original factory. That's how well they were built. Now, I normally would go inside at this point and do a walkthrough on the inside, but Luckily, Andrew still already did a walkthrough on the inside of this, and I'll put a link to his video in the description and wherever that thing does, right there. But uh, yeah, Andrew found a really nice motor home. Well guys, it's about time for me to head out of uh, Arizona and make my way to Kentucky. It's been a very hectic two weeks to say the very least, and uh, it's still hectic. I still haven't had a chance to breathe. But we did it. Magically, somehow, we did this. Because Doug threw a curveball at me, he sold it in the time that uh, I said that I would drive it there after I do a few repairs and he's not, he didn't have time to get the body work done back in Kentucky so he asked me if I knew somebody in Arizona that could do it. And so I contacted my good friend Tom with Global T's body. He does fantastic work and he put off a few uh, of his customers to make time for me and he basically went above and beyond. So he had less than a week to do all the body work, the repairs and the paint and i think he did a fantastic job the inside was already beautiful the outside was pretty much the worst part of it and it was this driver's side that was the worst part and now the thing looks almost brand new and pristine and i'm gonna enjoy driving it back there now if you guys might notice the hubcaps are missing that's just because i was checking the hubs for the oil and i don't want to be responsible for the hubcaps falling off so i put them inside so they're just in the basement right there but I've checked out all the fluids, the tire pressure, and I think I'm ready to take this thing to Kentucky finally. But hopefully I'll see you guys in Kentucky. Definitely been a very strong chassis. Really had no issues with it. The exhaust brake worked fantastic. I was passing semis going up pretty steep grades. Uh, we pulled 70 miles an hour without an issue going up those grades. Uh, in fact, in Texas, I might have been going a little bit faster than 80. A little bit. Transmission ran cool the whole time. Engine ran cool the whole time. I was watching all my gauges, looking at the uh, the digital readouts up here. 
it was pretty flawless. I didn't, never felt uh, like I was out of control, and I felt very safe. This is a very, very strong chassis. I, it gets out of its way. I don't feel like I'm a, a danger to other people on the road because I'm so slow or I can't turn. Handling is fantastic. It's a good chassis. It's a good motorhome. I did not keep track of the mileage the entire time, but for just over 1,500 miles on the trip, we were averaging about 6.9 miles a gallon. From this point on, which was I think around El Paso, 226 gallons of fuel we used. It's a lot of fuel. Now I may have put together a quick road video about mileage and my math may not have been 100%. But I'm glad you guys checked it for me. I was a little tired, and that was only in El Paso. That was the first day. That's what I'm going to blame. Not that I'm a bad student. Well, there it was. We went from Arizona through New Mexico, just a little bit of New Mexico, into Texas, all the way up from El Paso to Dallas to Texarkana, up through our up through Arkansas, Kentucky. We made it. We delivered this Contessa and we didn't crash it, we didn't damage it because my good friend Tom, his entire crew painted this entire sidewall, the roof, the front cap, the rear cap, the engine base, and I didn't want to do any damage to it and I think I did pretty well. Can't believe it's been about a month now since I first saw this Contessa with Andrew when we went to take a look at it and uh, I think he made a really good choice. People are always asking me what to look for when you're buying an RV. And it's going to be quality, and this was quality. All right, Doug, I appreciate you inviting me out. That's Your uh, dealership looks fantastic. Thank you. I was already able to enjoy Kentucky like uh, a few months ago. You told me that you had a uh, natural bridge here. Yep. And that's what I hit this morning. Did you go to the natural bridge? I did hit the natural oh, bridge already this morning. Beautiful. And then just yesterday, we were driving uh, up, is it the 40? 64, probably. 64, probably. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And I saw a sign for Mammoth Cave, and I said, I want to go see a cave. And so we hit the cave, too. Nice. Nice. Kentucky is just absolutely gorgeous. Next time you're up, uh, when uh, spring meets here, we'll have to take you to uh, Kingwind. And if you like horses, you're really going to like that. We love horses. Yes. All right, Doug. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We made it safely and uh, gorgeous. Like I said, it was a pleasure driving this. Yes. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'm pretty tired. It's kind of amazing what... Uh, one night in Kentucky will do. It was just 80 degrees yesterday. And now there's snow on the motorhome. And don't forget to subscribe to uh, RVing with Andrew Steele. Thanks guys. Bye. Andrew found a really nice motorhome and I'm a little jealous. Not too jealous because I do have a beaver right there. One day we'll take a look at it. But not today. I have to go to Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, this thing drove fantastic. That was uh, not tiring at all to drive because of the motorhome, just the distance. Man, it still looks good.